Okay. We are now live. Yeah, so we're waiting for viewers. We're waiting for our students to start joining. Can you share the link? Okay, share the link. Where do you get the link? Not, not this one. Because they're gonna join the hangout. Go to the go to online UWC Google Plus page and share that. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook speak. Facebook. Sending Facebook message. <coughs> yeah. About no. But let's just send it. I'm just going to check on Facebook and see what they're saying. We shall do it in the video. No, did you get the link? Oh no. But is sending the link right now. No, that's right. Yeah. You see, I'm logging twice. Huh? I'm logging in twice. Tomorrow's nature for this final look. You see, they have all the natures are here. But we haven't posted a link yet. Thank you. Okay, okay. One zero, two zero. How many computers are you using? Okay. Okay, I was touching Johan. So I'll, I'm just doing an introduction. Hi, guys. Sorry for the delay. We had some challenges with te technical challenges. Um, so our speaker today is Johanne Milani. Uh, Johanne was born and raised in Swaziland and he attended Waterford Gamshava UWC USA. He is currently he, he is currently a master of pub he's currently studying a master's in public health and policy management at Columbia University Male School of Public Health in New York. Um, Johanne earned his bachelor's degree in public health at Skidmore College, where he was involved in, in multiple community projects focusing on health education, conducted community-based research looking at perceptions of male circumcisions in related to HIV, in which he was a principal investigator. He also conducted multiple community projects in Switzerland, some of which he's going to talk to us about. So, uh, Johanne? We're all, we're all ears. Thank you so much, SP. Um, again, we apologize for starting so late. Uh, um, as, as SP has mentioned, I was born and raised in Swaziland. Um, as some of you may know, Swaziland has the highest rate of HIV AIDS and high unemployment rate of about um, 40%, and according to, to the World Bank, 63% of the population live below the poverty line. You know, growing up in Swaziland, I fell in some of the statistics. I lived under poverty, and as you can imagine what goes on in a, every child's mind who is living under poverty. I wanted to grow up, have a lot of money, own a big house, and have lots and lots of food. Somehow this actually kept me on my toes at school and I performed really well. It wasn't until I started at Waterford, a UWC World College in Swaziland, um, that I was pushed outside my selfishness. 
I had to to conduct community services, something that wasn't familiar with me. I was always at the under at the other end where I was receiving help from others. And at this point I had to be at, on the opposite side. This actually shift, slowly shifted my thinking to to the point where I was thinking more about what can I do to better my community instead of what can I do to earn lots of money and food. Uh, as you can imagine, this actually, for some reason, um, didn't push my, 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 my grades that much. But um, my grades were still, were still OK. Overall, I really liked the concept of community service. And I thought that if most of the youth were involved in community services, our, com our communities would be, would be way advanced. I saw community service as a way to empower youth to be responsible citizens and to encourage them to be involved in development of their communities. I shared these views, these views with um, friends, and it ended up leading to us starting an initiative which was aimed at helping helping youth find resources to support their initiatives in their communities. But this is not the project that I will highlight today. I want to highlight a project which was a result of me being involved with uh, different community groups in Swaziland. So I had worked with um, a soup kitchen serving meals and teaching English um, to HIV orphans. They faced challenges as some youth in the community broke into the soup kitchen to steal the donated food. Clearly, that was a result of the high poverty and unemployment rates that I was talking about earlier. So I wanted a way in which we can bring together the, the youth in the community, encourage them to be more responsible, you know, and take ownership of communal spaces like the soup kitchens they were breaking into. So I worked with a friend to design a strategy which sought to bring the community, not just the youth, but everybody in the community to build a community soccer field, which everybody in the community thought was really valuable. For those who may not know, community fields can be used from just playing soccer into being an educational center where they have different activities where everybody in the community can come together and learn a lot about a lot of about a lot of things. And um, in my case, I was hoping that it would provide a space where um, you can have, you know, more HIV education. So we wrote we wrote a, a grant proposal, you know, because we wanted to take this a step further where. Um, the youth wanted to, had to feel even more responsible in other um, places except besides the soccer field. In addition to what they had to do was to renovate the soup kitchen that they were breaking into. So this grant proposal that we wrote at the end of it all, um, it was, at, it was our, awarded a total of about 13,000 US dollars. And it was implemented in the summer of 2010. Um, there were multiple challenges that um, that came with doing this project. With, that came with this project. Number one, it was um, it was selling the idea to other people who could have who could help me make it possible. And the solution that I approached was to make sure that I I approached people that were kind of different from me that they had different skills, they have different view of the world, so that they can keep me in check. If I want to do something that might, you know, might be not idealistic, they will help me realize that actually this will not work. Um, and in this case, we work together to make something that was you know, more beneficial. The other challenge that we face, particularly in the um, particularly in, in, the, in the soccer field project, was bringing people from different parts of the community to work in one goal. And the problem is that this was a big community, 
and um, people from different sides of the sides of the community were actually beefing about each other. So we had to actually kind of start out, start with some kind of a conflict resolution um, sessions. A third challenge that I can highlight was that the project. Um, excuse me. The, the third project is that it was really difficult, as I mentioned that this was a big, um, this was a big um, community. It was difficult to find a centrally located area where we can place the film. And that was something that we couldn't really deal with um, ourselves. Um, everybody wanted the field to be on their side. And um, you know, you can imagine it was starting to be a heated argument when we were having meetings with the youth. And we had to bring in um, community leaders to come in and help us identify a centrally located area. And this is to highlight that it, even if you are a leader in your own project and you're nurturing your own goal, your own dreams, make sure that you know when you cannot handle things. You know when to seek outside help um, for, 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 for support. Um, and what's next? What's next in this project? I think I can highlight that um, my career has shifted has shifted from when I was a child growing up um, in rural areas. Um, now my career is dedicated to making changes in the community, improve, improving health by empowering communities to make healthy lifestyle choices. I'm particularly interested in understanding models of healthcare delivery that will ensure high quality of care with, um, with the limited resources that communities have. Actually, as a matter of fact, with the limited resources that countries have. I personally do not see resources uh, increasing anytime soon. So creative minds like yours will help come up with the best solutions. And you don't necessarily have to wait for your master's or a PhD program to speak your mind. It, is, it starts now. You can do something in your community today. And I also just want to highlight that I didn't want to to prepare a lot of a long speech or anything, I wanted this to be some kind of discussion. I have highlighted just a brief the things that I did, and um, if there are any questions from there, I want to use this that for us to dive in deeper into my experience. SP, do you have any questions that are coming towards you? I don't, can you hear me? Now I can't hear you. Okay. I can hear you now. Yeah, okay. So um, Johanna is, is, uh, is inviting us to start asking questions right now and uh, basically he wants us to start a discussion to talk about projects, challenges that we are facing, how, we, to, how, how can we overcome them and mm -hmm. just ask him too how he overcame certain challenges uh, while implementing his project. So, we can just start with the questions right now and start discussing. Discussing. Uh. Yeah, I'm still waiting for the questions. I think usually they type questions and then that's how I, I'm able to see them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you can continue talking about uh, your projects, more challenges, and uh, hopefully mm -hmm. we'll get questions as you continue with this with your lecture. Well, I had um, I'd cut down in multiple other 
project. So I can mention um, my interest in, um, in improving healthcare system in Swaziland. I've worked in projects where uh, I, I think you mentioned in you mentioned earlier that I was working with the Ministry of Health to understand HIV interventions, particularly male circumcision. I think challenges came more in in um, projects like those where you had to deal with the government. There are more steps that you had to take in making things happen. And um, I think the more interesting thing and encouraging thing is that people are always willing to help you. People will come through to make things happen. I, I didn't have much experience in research except a few classes that I had taken in undergrad. And, um, I didn't know the process that I had to go through to to have a research proposal approved. But the ministry itself, they came through in um, providing all the resources that I can and giving me directions where I should or how I can go about sampling. You know. And um, again, I think this goes to the main the main challenge of um, selling your ideas. I think I cannot stress enough that if you want things to happen, if you want to make a difference, share your ideas. Know who you talk, who to talk to. Not everybody is going to help you nurture your idea, but if you don't give up, if you don't believe in anything, someone is going to come through to help you. And I can also highlight that um, we, we all have stories. We all have stories that can help us drive patient. If you look around you, look around the world, there's a lot that you can find passion about and make a difference. And um, being involved in community projects um, doesn't, it, it helps you learn. It's, it's a learning experience. It's one thing that um, you have to take when you go out there. You're not going as, out as a helper. Like, I'm going to help this community. They are struggling there and there, and that's that. You're going out there to also learn. Give those people there the respect, and you're going to benefit a lot, you know. And um, I really, I really encourage everybody to, to, to take steps towards being involved in one way or the other. And um, SP, you've been involved in some of the projects that I've worked with, you know. You can, you know, you can say more and highlight some of the things that um, you know were challenges. I know it was it was a huge challenge to manage a group during that project. You 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 were one of the people who were always you know dragged into situations in community where people are not trying to get to you know we're trying to convince them that what we're trying to in the community will benefit everybody, but some just want something that will benefit themselves. It was also challenging to manage a group of students. You, in particular, were in charge of students from Waterford to make sure that they come to the community service. That wasn't something that is easy, but it took to dedication and patience. Is there anything that you'd like me to highlight? Um, at the moment, we have uh, questions. Um, okay. Yep, one of the questions is, what was the biggest challenge you had to fight while doing your project? Um, so the project of um, 
the soccer field, one biggest challenge that um, I had I had to fight more often was was with contractors. We had to contract um, <laughs> we had to contract people to you know graders to come clear the la the land and all that. That was one of the hectic things. And I think some people take advantage if they see you to be young. They just come to work and not do anything. And later be like, oh, we're done, your hours are done. And um, that was one big thing that I had to step up to, stand my ground, and say, this is what we want to achieve. And we want to achieve, to achieve it by this time period. And um, I think I think biggest challenge was sticking to the work plan that we have. A lot of people were just trying to take their time. I hope that um, answers the question. SP. Another question that we have is um, how you overcome having no support or little interest of other people in your project? Any help to make my project more appealing? <clears throat> I think I mentioned earlier that um, before you even go to the implementation phase, recruit people that will be on your side. Uh, my, my best advice is that don't recruit people who have the same skills as you, who have the same interest as you. Find people who see the world different than you do. Find people who are in different fields. For instance, I'm in public health. When I was working on my project, I was working with some someone in business and economics. I was working with people who were in biochemistry and stuff like that. So I think finding 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 those kind of people will help. Also, tell your story before before you try to convince other people. Know why you are doing what you do. If you're doing something that you cannot, you know, stand your crowd to and have a, a five-minute elevated pitch, it's gonna be challenging for you to con to convince other people. But again, ask for help. Share your ideas with others. Help them develop them. You know. I hope that is helpful. Yep. Um. <clears throat> Another question. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a project that is kind of complex. I want to find out just how much chemicals are refineries throwing away into the air in my town. But okay. to do that, the information I need is somehow private, and I'm 99% sure they will not help me. Okay. So. I'm trying to figure out, is that working with the government? Uh, I mean, this guy, uh, he's asking like, he wants to ask industries, he, wa he wants to figure out how much chemicals are the industries throwing into his town or her town. Mm -hmm. But um, the challenge that he's having is that to, to get the information about the chemicals, mm -hmm. require her to go to these private companies yeah. And these private companies might not be willing to reveal such information. Yeah, I think I think that's a big issue everywhere. It varies by country, by state, you know, whatever policies um, are there are in place for those companies. Definitely, you have a point. They are definitely not going to be willing to open up. And tell you those, the, the what whatever they are, they are that they are, you know, they are extruding to the environment. 
I think the first step is to understand the policy that is in place. Is there anything that they are allowed to to share with the public? Is um is there a limit of how much they can they can they can pollute? Or is there a limit of how much how much chemicals they can they can they can take out into the sea? And also I think this is a this is a, you're right, this is a really complex um project that you cannot necessarily work on by yourself. You have to you have to figure out more other uh, bigger organizations that are you know environmental protection um, agencies. Is this is this person asking the question in the US or somewhere else? I can't hear it. Uh, I'm not sure where he is, mm -hmm. but uh, I will let you know soon. Uh, okay. Ricardo Hernandez, can you just please write uh, where you're from? Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, another question. Yeah. Uh, how, how to inspire children when words like education and environment are directly involved in the projects? Say the question again. Like, uh, how can we inspire children when words like education and environment are directly involved in with with the projects? Do you get the question? I'm I'm struggling to understand. How yeah. can you? Yeah, like, uh, how can you get young kids be involved in projects that uh, involve a lot of education? Oh. And Oh. Okay. Um, okay. By the way, uh, Ricardo is from Venezuela. Oh, I see. I see. I'm not aware. Again, I'm not aware of the. Um, back to Ricardo's question. I'm not aware of the policies that in place. You know, in 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 some places like um, SP, you know, Switzerland. So as when there's so much corruption such that even if, even though there may not be policies in place, um, companies can be working with the government to hide how much they are polluting. So it's really complex of how to go around that place. In other places, it can be pretty dangerous, you know. Um, again, I'll say, I'll say to Ricardo, try to try to reach out to different people who might be, who might have more knowledge in in that area and understand the policy that is in place. So the next question that was in place was, how can you inspire children? Yes, to be involved in projects that in that include education and environment. So I think that's that's like if you are. I think just to clarify the question, this is asking how can you make educational programs that are focused on education itself and um, environment itself. How can you make them more appealing to children? Yes. And um, in, that, in that sense, I say it's all about how you message it. And it also varies. This varies from culture to culture. You know, um, what, is, what, what tools can I use um, when I'm working with kids? Do kids um, in Swaziland prefer activities or they prefer to sit down and read? And I think in most cases, um, what kids want is not to sit down, but is to have games. Have games that are educational, you know? 
change everything. It's a whole field. This is all about um, early childhood education and things like that. It's, it's a whole field just like how do you make education more appealing. And again, it will vary with the culture that you are in. I know my answer might be vague, but I cannot be specific enough, you know. And again, SP, you can add, and anyone else can add if um, there is more, if they can be more specific. Okay. Yeah. Um, so another one more question. Uh, I did my project thinking large scale, building complex, building complex for the community. I feel it's very large. It's, I feel it's a very large project for a young man like me. Mm -hmm. But I want to do that. I want for the future. But will I need a more concrete or a simple project? I personally start small. I don't. The, the other important thing about um, projects is to make realistic goals for you. If you feel like your project is um, too big for you or too complex for you, and you know you might want to cut it down. Probably the big idea that you 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 are working on, you know, it's it's not bad. It's not big if you if you create a realistic timeline. When do you want to achieve the goal that you, you have put yourself? If you say you want to build a house within two days, that's too big for you. If you say by, by 2018, I want to have raised money to build a house for that lady next door. I think that is possible. So again, even if it's big, you know, you can you can create a realistic timeline and make sure that you're flexible. If you work with other people or introduce your ideas to other people, make sure you're willing to take advice and update it, you know, from time to time. Projects change. If you have a big project that you you know you wanna do over a long period of time. No, that is going to evolve. You know. And I hope that is clear that you know there's no big project um, if you create the right timeline. It's good to to dream big, but for those big dreams to happen, there has to be small dreams that build up to that big dream. Yeah, um, those are the all the questions that uh, we have. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, thank you very much, Johanne, for taking uh, time from your busy schedule and to give us um, an insight on how to manage a project from the beginning till the end. We have challenges along the way and how you overcame them. We really appreciate that information. Um, and just to the students, I would like to say thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for your patience. Uh, today we have, we have big challenges. We had big technical challenges. And uh, thank you for your patience. Thanks for attending the classes. And you guys had really wonderful questions. Um, so as you know, uh, we're going to post this lecture on our YouTube account. Uh, feel free to go there and watch it again if you missed something or you joined late. Uh, so that should be it for today. And uh, SP, yeah, um, please feel free to share my email. I would like to stay in touch with those that are working in projects from time to time. And if um, there are more follow-up questions. OK. Yeah, yeah um, we will definitely share Johanna's uh, email address. Uh, so you'll be able to get in touch with him. If he's not replying as if he's not replying your emails or maybe you think he's not getting your emails, just send them directly to me. I'll be able to connect the two of you. So uh yep.
thanks Johanne for for offering your time to help with the with the project. I'll say also we there are already projects on uh, our website OCF on the project. You'll see a lot of projects there, and we can also connect with the students there. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's it for today. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you. Have a good night, Johanne. Thanks again. Bye.